Good afternoon, everyone. It is 3.30, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to the last um, SchoolNet webinar for the 22-23 school year. Uh, thank you all so much for being with us. I apologize to those of you that have been with us um, earlier um, because the chat is <clears throat> being overwhelmed with um, the bit.ly. So I apologize for you to keep seeing that, but anyone new that is coming in, I will be posting the bit.ly for the slide deck today in the chat um, so that you can access it. It is also on the screen as well. Um, so your mics are gonna be muted just because of the settings for WebEx. So any questions that you have, you can please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, so it does not allow for unmute. So any questions, just put them there in the chat and I will be monitoring it um, throughout uh, the presentation today and we'll be happy to address any questions um, that anyone may have. But it is 3.30, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, first, want to say hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Rebecca Stokes and just realized that I need to take that off. So please ignore that screen. I'll get that adjusted. Um, Please make sure you are just looking at that bit.ly. Um, but my name is Rebecca Stokes. I am the product manager for NCDPI and my email address is located right here on this screen. And we also have um, the wonderful Catherine Simone from Pearson with us. Catherine, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, Catherine Simone, I'm the implementation manager for North Carolina from Pearson. We are so lucky to have her with us. She was with us at home base meetups last week as well. If any of you were there with us, which looking through the attendees, I do see several um, familiar names of people that were with us last week as well. So thank you for being with us again today. All right, so um, our agenda for today, um, this is an item types session. So we are gonna be talking about item types and most specifically those technology enhanced items, um, since that is more um, hot topic news with our uh, testing um, situation that has come up this year with technology enhanced items being on the EOGs and EOCs for grades that might not have had them before. So we're gonna talk about what those questions are and the correlation between the EOC and EOG items where we can find those items that are already created in SchoolNet. Uh, we're gonna look at the student view of those items. And then we're going to also talk about um, creating those technology enhanced items as well as converting. And Catherine being the wonderful person that she is, um, we are switching it up just a little bit because if you have been with us before, you know that we end up getting great questions in the chat and it usually will push us over our hour time limit. So we're actually going to switch this presentation up and we're gonna start with converting questions because we wanna make sure that the most important thing or the most important content that we wanna to get to you comes first so that if anyone does have to leave or if it ends up um, pushing over our hour time, um, and people have to leave then that you're not missing the content that we wanted to make sure that you got um, because this is a repeat session from the January webinar. So if you attended that webinar as well, uh, we will be going over those same type of things. So even though we are switching up the order of things, we are going to cover all of these things that are in the agenda today. And um, before we get started, just talking about CEUs. Um, so everyone that is in the webinar with us today will receive 0.1 CEUs. Those will be emailed to you after the session as long or as well as the video and the slide deck. Um, if you attended the April one, don't worry, I have not sent it out yet because I'm trying to just send both of these at the same time. So I know some people had asked, um, so I have not forgotten about you just with home base meetups last week is kind of pushed me back a little bit. So I will be sending the April and May at the same time, um, but you will get 0.1 CEUs for your attendance today. If you share this webinar with someone, just know um, that they cannot get credit for watching the recorded webinar. It's only if you are with us in the live one. Okay, so um, like I said, we're gonna switch up the order of our session today. So you're actually going to be going to the very end of our session and we're gonna start with converting questions into technology enhanced items. And we're gonna do that in the training site. Um, so don't worry about the order of the slide deck because we will be sending out the re recording of this webinar um, 
but we're going to actually start with the with the end in mind, as most of us have heard um, in our school. So we're going to actually start at the end and work our way backwards. So, um, Catherine, do I need to release control, or can you just take uh, it over? Let me see if I can get it. Um, did it let you? Uh... Yep, I'll say I have okay. stopped. All right. Okay. Um, can everyone see my screen? Yes? No? Can you see my screen yet? Uh, no, it's not. Why isn't it sharing? Oh, let me see. It's not sharing. Hold on a second. Try it again. No. I had to reconnect my um, AirPods, so I couldn't hear you there first. Oh, I guess. I it wasn't. If you I don't think me. it was sharing. I'm trying to make sure it's sharing. Oh yes, I could see. see. I my... just couldn't hear you. Oh you yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Let's... No, it was me. I had to disconnect and reconnect um, my my okay. AirPods. So. All right. Everyone sees my school net screen. Um, I have started a test. So um, shortest way to convert items um, to TEI items. I chose five math items from the NCBPI classroom bank. Okay. Um, you're going to see those items in a minute, but yeah, very so it does say, I'm sorry, Catherine, to interrupt you. It does say Catherine is starting to share content, but it's actually oh. not on the screen yet. It was earlier. Um, yep, I see people in the chat are saying they could see it the first time, but they can no longer see it. Um, okay. So it says you're starting to, but now, no, not yet. Okay, let's try it again. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Third time is a charm. Now, let's see. It says starting still. Oh, I don't like WebEx. Sorry. <laughs> I know this is every time anybody that's been in our sessions knows that at least once we are both saying, oh, oh WebEx. Man. All right. Let me try one more time. Do you click the screen or the application? Um, when I share, I always click um, the All screen. Right. Let's do this. I am going to do my entire screen. Let's see if it works. Okay. We can. We can see that. Yep. Oh, good. All right. Sorry about that, everyone. As I was saying, I pulled five math items. I did random grade levels just because I wanted to have, you know, a variety. Um, what I do, I put them in the test detail page. And if you move from the item summary to the item details, okay, what's going to happen is you're going to get this button here that says copy multiple items. Um, when I click this button, I get to choose the items I want to copy and I'm just going to pick all five right now. Okay. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I'd like to, my preference, you may have another way, but I like to retain uh, the original information in case I make a mistake. I can always delete it later. Um, but I've selected my five items, as you can see. And once I select at least one item, I get this copy selected items up here and I hit copy selected items. It says, are you sure? Yes, I definitely wanna copy. And you could copy them to a new test if you wanted to, but for my purposes, I am just going to put them back in this test to make my life easier. And there's my test. I know I have two by the same name. One has a period in the uh, title, so I remember it. And now, instead of five items, I have 10 items. So, number one and number six are identical. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to jump right into editing my items. And you can see number one is a little word problem and it's multiple choice, and the answer is just a number, 35. So I'm gonna jump to number six because I know that's the duplicate. Because I pulled it from the bank, I need to unlink it first. Once I unlink it, 
I've already decided I'm going to make this a grid it question, which means they fill in the box with the number. I hit grid it. Are you sure? Yes. Try to remember the answer is 35. That's why I left number one so I could check it. I hit 35 in the answer. If I wanted to change anything here in the question, I could. If not, I'm going to leave it, hit save. I've converted one. All right. Number two matches number seven. And this question, when you look at this one, um, has box plots and it asks which statement is true. One of the recommendations we got was a checklist item. Um, so I'm going to unlink this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly change the question to be to, um, what did I, I called it, which statements are false, choose all that apply, okay? So I'm going to hit checklist right here. Now, sometimes the content does not retain when you change the item type. So I'm going to hit here, multiple choice. And my question stayed, but my answer choices didn't. But that's OK, because I'm just going to jump up here to number two. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick copy paste of them and put the answers back in. I know A was correct, so I don't want to select that one as the correct answer. All right. And the rest were false. So all the rest will be the choice of the selection. Now, my understanding from the items on the test, when you have a multi-select item, the students need to choose all the correct answers um, and they don't get partial credit. All I'm doing here is copying and pasting the responses from number two to number seven that matches. Okay, I think I got that last one. Put that in there. And on this one for the checklist, you can see I need to select the correct answers. I'm not going to set the maximum number of responses, but I am going to set it to all or nothing scoring. And as I said, I just need to change this last piece of it. And because it's false, I'm going to make this bold just to emphasize it, okay? And then um, no restrictions there, okay? And that's if there's a maximum number of responses. So the kids could select all, but if they don't get the three correct ones, they won't get the point value. You can change this point value if you want. You could change it to any number. Um, so that's another option. And this is called a checklist item. So it's a multi-select multiple choice, hit save. And now I've converted two questions. For the next question, let me show you what this one looks like. Number eight, which corresponds to number three. This one is a box plot graph. And um, what I'm going to do with this one is I am going to change it to a gap match. Okay. And what a gap match is, is you drag and drop answers to complete a phrase or a sentence. So since this is the correct answer here, I'm going to copy this because I want to use this statement. I'm going to go up here, unlink it again change the type, go down here to gap match. Okay. This time my entire question did not save, but I'll show you how to get that back in there. I wanna put my prompt back in there first because I saved that from the answer piece. I like to put the question up in the question prompt. So if I go up here to, this was number three, and I'm going to copy this, put it back down here, number eight. Hey, Catherine, there was a question of, sure. are you clicking edit first? 
edit in each item uh, or in the test detail i did click edit yes um it just says are you clicking edit first so i'm thinking maybe of how to get to this and i believe that's what they're asking so if you're in the test okay. details page and you click edit right. items that is how she is getting here let me return that so on that first screen that i was in i went to item details um, you saw I copied items. Once I copied the items, you can, there's an edit button here at the top, or you can go to any item and click edit. Okay, did that answer the Perfect. question? Yes, um, and Shannon, I see that you said that you're trying to write down the steps. So we are going to send you this recording as well, and it will also be embedded into the slide deck um, as well for you to be able to access back at any time. And we'll show you where the QRCs are for this. Okay. Um, so I was on number eight. Um, I copied and pasted the prompt. Just a reminder to everyone, this one had an image. So I have to take a screenshot of the image. If you're using a Mac, it's control alt four. If you're using a PC, you can use the snipping tool. So I'm going to take a picture of it. Go back to at number eight. Remember, you cannot copy and paste images. So here's the little image icon. I'm going to insert the image. I'm going to grab it. Recenter it. And now I have it there. The last part of the question I am changing. So I'm going to put that down here on top of that answer phrase and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to type here, complete the statement to make it true. Just remember when you're converting items, sometimes you just need to change the directions a little bit for the students. Okay. So in order to use a gap match, what I'm going to do is I already dissected this question. So there's group X, there's group Y. There's the spread, which could be greater or a median spread. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate Y and in place of it, I'm gonna insert a gap there. And instead of greater, I'm going to place another gap and then X, would have been the last answer and put another gap there. These gaps seem a little big to me, so I'm gonna use the wheel, the widget here, and I'm gonna make them a little bit smaller. You can try whatever you want, but I'm gonna use 75 because I think that's gonna be a good fit for me at this point. Eliminate my extra space. Now I have to add my answer choices. Remember, I had an X, I had a Y, I said there was going to be greater, and then there could have been a median spread. And where did I get those words from? In question three, they were all the choices for the other multiple choice answers. So I just used those same words when I used my gap match. Now, what I wanted to do, okay, because this says group, and this says group. So I'm going for this particular one, you don't have to do this all the time, but I'm going to turn off, turn on my answer choices. And one of my answer choices is going to be group. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. And then this is going to be spread. And then I decide this one's in the group. Group. Spread. Spread. And the reason I'm doing this is because we have a, you know, I want to make sure I show you all the options for this question. So that's why I'm putting this in there. So remember why should have been the first gap there. So when I scroll down, I now have to select the answers. Gap one is why. Gap two was that spread, which the original answer said greater and gap three was another group and it was X. Okay. Now here again, you can say it's an all or nothing, or you can leave it 
as a point for each one correct. That's entirely up to you. Okay. When I'm finished here, I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to take a quick minute because I didn't preview the first two, but I'm going to go here to the student preview. And let me just do this real quick so you can see the difference in these. That's two. And four. Okay, so I'll give you a quick preview. Rebecca, can you just let me know if the pop up screen shows? Of course. Yeah, it just shows connecting right at the moment. Okay. All right. But it, you do see the connecting screen. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just checking. Okay. So this was the first question. When I converted it, now students are going to answer 35 there. Second question, again, it was multiple choice. Okay. This time they have to select all that apply. Third question was multiple choice. This time you can see they have to choose and drag to the containers to complete the statement about this box plot. Okay. All right. Can so, Catherine, that, can yes. you show? I'm sorry, can, since you had designated the group and spread, can you show what would happen if a student put median in that last box where you have the X? They can do so that. It'll, yeah, it, it'll, it'll still allow, allow them to. Yeah, it definitely will they allow just have them to. to. I would, I mean, if, I'm assuming, depending on the grade level, that's why I said I'm really only showing this to make you aware that it's an option um is it ne was it necessary for this question probably not at all just but it's good to see the options yes <laughs> this is like my <laughs> bells and whistles test okay were there any other question before i do the next one um there's not any in the chat no okay okay so the next question This uh, is a polygon, which statement is true? Okay, so for this one, what I did was I decided to make this an inline question. Okay, so I think that can, should go with number nine, if I'm not mistaken. All right, good, I'm gonna move this up. All right, so here again, just a reminder, I have to unlink okay and i'm going to choose this just like i did with the gap match it's similar to a gap match but it's a little different i'm gonna oops sorry i need the keyboard command i'm um, just you're not seeing this but i'm using Control c Control v or command c command v when i copy and paste um, these real quick so i'm going to change this to what i call an inline response and here again, I'm going to need to repaste my question, but I'm going to put that answer in there first, and you'll see why in a minute. And I'm going to say this is a polygon. And then I'm going to screenshot this real quick. And go back here. Yeah. Remember, insert my image i just took a picture of it put it in there i'm going to center it okay this is a polygon and for this question i am going to say complete the statement to make it true you could type anything you want there but and what I'm going to say is side F, okay, I'm gonna cut this out because this is my answer choice. And in place, I'm gonna put a gap here. This time the gap is not a drag and drop, okay? But I'm gonna take that answer that I just had and I'm gonna put it down here randomly, say number C, I'll go back to number seven, 
the original number seven and I'm going to say intersects with I'm not a good typist, so I just copied everything. Uh, and then this one is perpendicular to. And I did not keep the Ray one. I decided against it for my particular question. Um, but I'm going to save this. And quickly show you what that one looks like. Maybe not that quickly. All right, I'm going to go on to the next question while that loads. Um, and that's an inline. I'll come back and let you preview that one in a minute. For the last question, uh, I'm going to create a hotspot. This is the most difficult question to create, but um, just show you this real quick. Save my question. Screenshot my image. Okay. And go to number 10 so you can see the difference. I unlink it. And for this one, it's going to be a multi hotspot question. And it's going to say, which angle is acute? This one saved it. I still needed that image though, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, and what I'm going to ask them to do is to click on the points that form an acute angle. Oops, I knew I had a typo. All right. So what do I do with the image for a hotspot? I have to attach the image here. So I'm going to attach my canvas. Come on. Get that last screenshot. Put it in here. OK. Now the image is here. All right. I'm going to put some circles in there, and these will be my answer choices. So what I like to do is get one circle correct around the point. I'm going to go on to number two to B. What I do is I actually like to put them on top of one another so they're all the same size so that I'm not um, leading the children astray. <laughs> and this way I know they're all the same size if I line them up on top of one another. Okay, did pretty good there. I'm going to just drag them to the actual points and then select which ones are correct. So the angle that's acute is right here, so they would need to select a, uh, C, and D for this answer to be correct. All right. Save that. And now hope that my preview will pop up quickly. That's called a hotspot item. Um, the difficulty is, is you need to have an image and be able to draw on the image to create the question. OK, so we went through these. Let's get down here to the this one. Oh, where's my inline? Oh, did I lose my inline? Oh, I didn't reorder it. I'm sorry. Here's my inline. I'm so sorry. I didn't reorder it. So this was the polygon question. This is a polygon. Complete the statement to make it true. Rather than dragging, they need to select the correct, correct answer to complete the statement. For the hotspot here, they would be clicking on the images that are the points 
that form the acute angle. And that's a very quick version of how to convert uh, to a couple different TEI items in SchoolNet. Okay. And Catherine, if you don't mind if I interrupt you really quick. No worries. Um, just because of time, because it's already four o'clock, and so we knew that this was going to take majority of the time. Um, I have recorded um, a video of converting questions that are ELA um, that I'm going to actually post um, in the email with the recording of this video as well, because we knew we wouldn't have time to show both of those because they would both be gone. So Catherine has shown you how to create these questions and I've done the same thing in a pre recorded video for ELA. So we didn't want ELA and science and social studies to feel like we were only showing math. Um, so that will be um, in the email that you get. So didn't want you to think we forgot about you. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Okay, and are you going to bring up the PowerPoint, Rebecca? Yep, I'll say thank you. Let me bring that back up. Um, and let's see, I was just checking the, the chat. And yes, Shannon, I agree with that. And Shannon, yes. it's good, good to see you again as well, <laughs> or to see that you're in here. Okay, let's see here. So let me, oh, let me get rid of that. I had shrunk it down. Uh, I think there we, go. we can go right to slide seven. Yes. Okay. Let me shrink this down. Okay. Um, so since we decided to, like we said, to begin with the end in mind and show you how to convert the questions, um, and you would actually go through that same process if you were creating your own questions. But if you are creating, then of course there's not going to be pre-filled question and pre-filled answer choices. You would just select hotspot or get match or whatever question type it was, but you would actually have to type the content yourself. Um, so that's why we didn't focus on creating them from scratch. We do have the quick reference documents that are included in here um, that walk through those steps um, that you will be able to access, but um, we felt it was probably more beneficial for teachers to be able to take questions that are already in SchoolNet, whether they be from Certica or the NCBPI classroom items and convert them. Um, so then you can use the questions and the answer choices that are already there. Um, so did want to put that out there as well. Um, but okay, so now let's go back to the beginning where we're going to talk about the correlation of SchoolNet items to the questions that are on the EOC EOG. Um, we have this document here and if you click on it, it is going to pop it out into a new screen for you um, for you to be able to access. Um, so on the left side are all of the technology enhanced items that students will see on their end of grade or end of course test. Now I know some grade levels don't have all of these options. Some of them only start um, I believe in like sixth grade. Um, so you would want to check your test requirements for the assessment that your students have as to what technology enhanced items they will see. Um, but these are on the left and then in the middle is the school net item type correlation, meaning what they're called in school net. Um, and you will notice that there's only one that we have a not applicable for, um, and that's for the text selection because on the EOG EOC, that's where the screen is divided into three different parts. And when students select a number that's in the top entry, it pops down to the bottom of the screen. Um, so we don't have anything that physically moves something from one part of the screen to another and turns it a different color. Um, I think the closest one that we have is hotspot, which is why Catherine showed you the hotspot because it is still interactive and it does put the blue border around the square or the circle, but it does not pop it down to another area of the screen, um, which is why it's not a direct correlation like the others. Um, but hotspot is a good practice for students for text selection. It's just not an identical um, or even almost identical correlation. So that's why we have that in A there. Um, and then on the right hand side, we have what item banks you can find these questions in. These are ones that are already there for you. Um, and it just lists the item bank that you can find it in. Also on this document, if you click here, it's gonna give you the descriptions of all of these questions. 
and if you click here, it's going to give you the technology enhanced items question types by test, and that is actually being pulled from DPI. So this is going to tell you um, what questions are on which assessment. So definitely want to check that for your grade level. Um, and then at the bottom here, and this can also be found on the um, splash page on the leadership splash page um, in SchoolNet if you are with us and you are in a leadership role. Um, but everyone can access it here. That is going to actually pull up a spreadsheet that Catherine and Amanda um, created for us where they list all of the item banks at the bottom of the screen. And then you can see it's broken down by subject as well as grade level. And it will tell you how many technology enhanced items or um, actually any items because you can see multiple choice here as well. There are for that grade level and subject in that particular item bank. Um, so if you want to look here first before converting questions, then you could see like if you knew that you wanted a checklist item, then if you taught fifth grade ELA, there are 67 in the Certica bank currently. Um, same for math, if you knew that you wanted um, a gap match and you taught 11th grade math, you have 27 and that's just in that one item bank. Um, so the reason why we wanted to show you how to convert items is if there isn't a large number in the item banks for the particular kind you're looking for, we did want you to be able to see how you can convert those items, um, taking a question that is currently multiple choice and changing it into the type that you are interested in. All right, um, Catherine, I have the chat not showing at the moment since I'm, so please let me know. Sure, we have one question. Um, okay. From Jasmine, can we share our test prep practice sets in SchoolNet so we can work smarter, not harder as a county? Um, test prep practice sets. Do you know what they are, Rebecca? I don't. Um, would you mind? Um, elaborating just a little bit for us of what what those are are the tests that you make do you make them in school net already or are they in another um, format okay all right and Catherine, help me. So, Jasmine, are you saying like if you create y'all are creating assessments in SchoolNet, and you're wondering if you can share them with your district? Oh, yes. So, the, I mean, so someone, and again, Catherine, you step in and correct me if I'm wrong. But someone with um, district leadership rights can create assessments and share it to the entire district. Or if you're creating your own questions, those can be shared um, as well. So you might want to, if you've already created them as a test, you could drop all the items in a bank. Um, you can share with your school too, yes. So if, I guess the question is, do they want to use the test as is, or do you want to create a bank of items that people can pull from? So both are optional. Um, it is easier, um, I would think, um, if the teachers are creating the tests, um, then they're my classroom test. So if they the items get dropped into a bank, then as Rebecca said, someone with leadership could elevate the bank district-wide, school-wide, uh, whatever the need would be. And then that way, everyone could have access to the items and pull them into little mini tests or whatever you wanted to do. Um, fun fact, Rebecca and I are working on our own TEI item bank, um, converting the some of the classroom items, and then we will be sharing those out, hopefully by the end of the summer um, across the state. So did I answer your question? And I can provide you directions if you email um, one of us, we can definitely get you better, uh, like concrete paper directions if you need them.
Okay, I'm just looking in the chat. Um, Teresa, we completely understand. And so if you can, um, if you want to stay on after this is over and we can show you how to do that. Um, no problem. And yes, um, we we really felt the need for that bank. So we are trying to do um, as much as we possibly can to get the teachers and you know leadership administration, everybody in North Carolina, as many of these questions as we possibly can. So um, we we hear the need and we understand it, you know, both of us being classroom teachers as well. So we um, are definitely going to be working on that. And like you said, hopefully by the end of the summer, so beginning of next school year, we will have a bank of those questions for you guys. And feel um, free if you have some of your own and you'd like to share with us, I'd be happy to pick them up from you. Not a problem. Yes, yes. So I'll say we'll be happy to um, um, to to get any of those as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I know someone had put in the in the chat that you don't have to share with your district. Of course, you do not have to share anything um, that you create with the district. Um, no. Just you can share with your school. You can share with one particular teacher if you'd like. Um, so, yeah, completely up to you who you decide to share anything that you create with. Yep. Okay. okay. Um, so Chris. I kind of gave you this view already. So we'll slide past this one. Um, yep, so this, this is was, just going to be yep. the student view of all the questions and Catherine did show that. I so, feel feel free to. I didn't do the open response, but that's the students typing in. That was the previous one. Yeah. Um, yep. That's like a short answer or a longer answer essay type of question. Uh, I think the next one, that's a hot spot. I did hot it. Spot. This one's a number line. I did it as an, um, points on. Um, and angle right what mm -hmm. and the one that I have in the ELA test I um it was a like they have to choose multiple words um that correspond with the vocabulary so uh, we oh, kind of show awesome. you a hot spot in in lots of different ways that yep. you can use it okay and then text replacement right and um, that was the inline question that I created I did numbers but obviously you can certainly do words <laughs> Let's see, drag and drop. I did not create a drag and drop. Um, this is different from the gap match, just to clarify this, in that the gap match, you drag one answer to one container. In this one, it's a container that'll hold multiple responses. So just and a little bit different. I, I do have this example in the ELA video. Oh, um, so yeah, I'll say, so I did do a drag and drop. Um, is anything being worked on for self-contained students? Um, I'm sorry, Pam. I, I do not understand. Um, just for, are you saying for students that have all of the subjects? I saw that in the chat. If, if that is what you're referring to, then yes, we are um, going to be working on converting for all subjects, not just. Yes. Oh, self-contained with extended standards. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, gotcha. I'm sorry. So we do not. We don't have, have items with extended standards currently. So it's whatever the state provides. Um, right. And I'll say, and currently they do not provide us with the NC extend. No. Unfortunately. Nope. I apologize for misunderstanding that question. Okay, let's see. Okay, this um, gap match. Gap match. So you can do it with words. I did it with numbers, um, but you can certainly create the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. And I did this one in the ELA as well. So perfect. Um, and then a graphic gap match. Um, just you cannot the create picture. these on, their, on your own, but there are some of these in the Certica bank. Very few, but some. Okay, and then these are just, um, they go over the title of the question for EOC, EOG, what that is in SchoolNet, and then it kind of gives you the item feature, um, what it accepts, some different, um, what's the word I'm looking for, specifications, I think. Yep, item features. Of the question. Yep, yeah. exactly. Okay. All right, so these are the quick reference documents that we were talking about that um, if you wanted to create these questions from scratch. So, for example, um, for gap match, 
if you did not want to convert, meaning you did not want the question to already be there for you to be able to copy or paste, we do have these typed out directions that do have um, the screenshots in there. Let me zoom it in just a little bit. Um, so it will walk you through every step of if you want to start from the beginning and create a gap match. Um, so we have those linked in here for all of these question types as well. Okay, so we have that for um, just basic, which would be multiple choice, um, true, false, checklist, 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 and mul checklist follows the multi select is the same way that you create a multiple choice. It's just that it has multiple answers. Okay. And then we talked about converting questions already. So. <laughs> <laughs> do what I said wow we did pretty good doing that I know thing. I can't believe it okay I'm trying to go back here um oh okay so I did um skip over this page I'm not gonna um go over too much of this but just what technology enhanced item questions even are um and just wanted to let you know that we do have the NC test tutorial webpage here I know that everyone has seen this um, but if you, for some reason, have not, um, just know that you can go to this NC test tutorial and the technology enhanced items will be on. I know it's on the grades 3 through 12 tutorial. There's actually one example of each question there. So it's only got seven questions um, that are provided here, but we did want to include that in there for you to be able to access. Um, but let's see, I think that's, I don't. Catherine, how on earth did we did we yeah, finish? Maybe the That's flip crazy. of the uh, going backwards has helped us. Um, but yes. questions, um, I know we have to follow up on one question on how to, oh, how to access the different banks. Yep, we can do that. Um, oh, oh, and Catherine, can you also show how to save these converted questions to a bank? Uh, sure, I can do that. I can probably get that all in one full swoop. So let me share my screen. I'm going to share screen, share, entire screen. I think I know how to do it this time. Can you see my screen? <clears throat> yes? No? Oh, come on. There we go. Can you see my screen yet? No. Okay. All right, we could, we could see it. Just know anytime you share your screen, I have to disconnect my AirPods and reconnect them to hear you for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, cool. So, yeah, so if you ever ask me a question after you share, it's not you, it's me. Okay. We can, can, we can see it. <laughs> you can see it now? Yes. <laughs> okay, great. So I can get to all three questions from this test that I made, um, except for the item bank one, but let me just show you this real quick. So for the first person, I created this test. I hit finalize. I say, okay. All right. Once I finalize this test, there is a button down here. Now, remember, it's only going to save the items I created. The multiple choice are already linked to a bank. So it won't pull those multiple choice, but I'm going to click all add all items to an item bank and for right now i'm going to use my personal bank or i can create a new bank so i'm going to call this pei for just for right now okay and if you want to share with someone else as a teacher you can only add people Okay, so I'm going to put Rebecca's last name in here. And hopefully she will. This is the training site. So I, say, I don't know if I'm I don't even know if your name's in there. But basically, you're adding the person's name. Okay, and then you would click on them. Let me just click a random person. Let's see if anybody can see. Oh. Here's how you can change schools 
here to share with somebody at a different school. So I, don't, I think I would have to know somebody training site, but I'm going to skip that piece of it. Let's just say I added people, they show up here. I can make them a manager, edit rights. I say, create the bank and save. And then you'll see that bank in a minute. For the person that needed to see how you get this out to your students, I'm going to finish scheduling this. I hit schedule. I give it a date. I'm just going to pick some random dates here for now. I'm going to, since I'm a teacher, I'm going to apply the default. It's only going to go to my classes, so I'm going to apply the default. Uh, you must assign it or the students won't see it. You can pick any of these other settings you want if you choose to, and then you must click save and publish at the bottom. The test will publish, generate text to speech if you've selected it, and then the passcode is here for your students. For the banks, over here, under assessments, scroll down, items, rubrics, and passages, item banks. And now, here's the list of item banks in the training site. You're going to have, you're going to see a little different view in the, obviously, in the production site, the live site, because we have a lot of junk in the training site, like me. We created one that's called me. Um, Desmos calculator questions someone was playing around with. I think that was Rebecca and I. But here's the five TEI items that I just picked up. Okay, and drop there. If I need to go back and manage my bank and add more people, I can hit manage and it'll open up. But let's go to this Certica bank so I can do a quick tour of this in the Certica 12.1 when I click on this. And just now you did click on the Spanish one. Oh, cool. Nice. <laughs> Thanks. Good to know. Yep. Okay, let me go up a little bit here. Let's go to the real item bank, not the one in Spanish. Thank you for pointing that out to me. And I'm gonna use this filters because I'm only interested in TEI items right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the first filter and then use this filter button down the bottom that says all filters. And here I can look only for certain item types. So let's just say I want grid it, open response, inline, checklist, hotspots, drag and drop, and the gap match. Okay, I'm going to hit apply. Oh, and then let's just say I am an ELA teacher and I am teaching third grade. If I want to check my standards, I can do that too. But for right now, I'm just going to hit apply filters. And now I'm only going to see the TEI item types that I want that I selected under this filters. If I want to change my filters, I can go back in um, and edit to, I don't know, look for a different type of item if I want, I guess. Uh, let's see if there's any. And this is just her searching in just the item bank for Certica 12.1. If you're creating an assessment, you can search all of the item banks at once, or you can do like Catherine is doing and just search one particular item bank. Completely up to you, whichever way you, you do that. If you want for ELA, you can group by passage. So now I can read the passages and I can see that this first one has six items associated with it. And they're, they all uh, are within my filters for the item types. Okay. And wow. Catherine, while you're here, can you close out of this and show um, there's a question in the chat about how to get rid of the Spanish questions. Can you show just real quick oh, yes. how to uncheck that item bank? Absolutely. So if you're searching all item banks and you don't want Spanish items, you want to make, well, not just Spanish items, but if you're, if you only want to search certain banks, you should make sure this box is checked for the banks you want to search. If you're not interested in the Spanish ones, the Desmos ones, whoops, sorry, that's me. 
you just need to let me zoom in because sometimes my screen doesn't want to play nice with the check boxes. Oh, sorry. It's because I'm too zoomed in. There you go. Get that away from there. Uh, where am I? So where was I? Here. I'm not gonna have this this one. I'm gonna uncheck that one. Uh I want the TEI, I don't want the release items, maybe I want the classroom, but this box, whatever is checked is if you're not searching one item and you're just click one item bank and you're just clicking at the top or you're within a test when you create a test, uh, let me go back to, I don't think I have one that I left. Open. I already just scheduled that one. If you start a test and I'm just filling this out real quick, and I generate from item banks, when I go here, it's only pulling from the item banks that I checked. And my filter of math third grade. Okay, so I had deselected a lot of item banks there. All right, did that answer that question? Or was there um, a piggyback on that one? There wasn't because yeah, they were just asking to only pull from the English. So yeah, so if you go under assessments and click item banks, you can uncheck those boxes underneath the item banks that you do not want to access. Correct. Um, and Blair, yes, if you share an item bank of questions that you've created with another person, then they would have access to those questions as well. Yep. Um, um, you know what? Let me just show that real quick. Let me log out of this teacher because the person that wanted the to share up on the item banks. I just want to show this option here. So if I go here to assessments, item banks, does this person have any of their own item banks? Yes, they do. Here's a sample item bank. So this actual leadership in account in the training site created this sample item bank. If they click manage here, okay, what I wanted to point out was that um, here they can add people, they can add schools, okay? Um, and if you want to share, um, with, make sure I say this right, Rebecca, if your district is working with another district, and you want to share items between districts, Rebecca and I can facilitate that for you, okay? Yes. Just shoot us an email or a ServiceNow case and we'll help you out with that. Because if, uh, so now Catherine, you correct me if I'm wrong, if you are doing a co-authoring, you can share with any teacher in the state. If you are sharing yes. an item bank, you can only share within your district. Correct. We can okay. help you share across the state. Yep. Perfect. All right. There are two additional questions. Um, so Tom said that they found for the inline questions that sometimes the answer or the end of the answer of longer choices is cut off. Um, but he noticed that you were able to adjust the size of the box in the gap match. Is there Correct. a way? Um, or he said, I like that there is a way to do that with the gap match. Is there similar control for the inline boxes? Can you adjust no. the size of those? I, I No, there isn't, unfortunately. I wish there was. And Lisa, do we know that all of the items in the banks we can choose from are good items to use with valid, ma valid matching with standard selected, et cetera? Um, so Lisa, the the technology enhanced items come from the Certica company. So we do purchase those and they are aligned to North Carolina standards. Um, the ones that we were showing you how to convert, those are 
going to be the ones that we pulled anyways are the ones from the NCDPI classroom bank and we converted those um, so both are aligned to North Carolina standards but of course if you ever see anything um, that seems off or you have a question about please feel free to reach out to us um, for us to be able to look at the question see if there was an error or anything like that um, but yeah, so we purchased from the Certica company and then um, NCDPI writes the ones that says NCDPI. But of course, um, teachers have the authority to be able to pick and choose what they would like. Um, so completely up to them which banks they choose. Um, yeah, of course, um, just know that the um, the ones from NCDPI are multiple choice. So those would have to be converted, which is what um, Catherine and I are working on. I think currently the technology enhanced are located ma majority in the Certica banks, if I'm correct, Catherine. Correct. Uh, yeah. I believe only in the Certica banks. Yeah. EPI did not release any um, TEI items. So that's what we are working on. <laughs> so. Okay, so Catherine, if it's okay with you, I'm going to take back over. Yep. Okay, let me pull this back up. There we go. There it is. Okay. All right. So I um, just want to show you at right now where it is blank and it says how do i convert questions this is where i will be putting the recording for this uh webinar i'll be posting it here on this last slide of this slide deck um, i will also email it to you separately um, as well so this recording will be here because um, when you're converting questions with there being so many different types you can convert to um, it would be a very lengthy quick reference document. So we're going to just post the recording um, just of Catherine converting, not of this entire webinar um, for you to be able to access. And I'll also have the video of me converting the ELA and science questions as well. Um, so those can be accessed here. Um, but this is the end of this session. Uh, we appreciate all of you being with us today. And this was our last session of the year. Uh, we will be starting this webinar series again for the 23-24 school year in August. They will be posted on the splash page of your SchoolNet site. Um, let me see if I can go ahead and just pull that in case you did not know that they were there. Um, I want to show you that real quick for next year so you'll know where you can see them uh, when you are logged into your school net. Um, the splash page is located right here in the top right corner. So right now you can see the link for today's webinar was up here at the top. So in August, you will see a list of all of our webinars for you to be able to register for um, for those. And then you will see other things that we have added um, as well. This is in the training site, so we don't have as much in there as we do in your production site. Um, but be on the lookout for next year's webinars. And if you have any ideas for uh, webinars that you think would um, be of need for teachers or that you would be interested in attending, please uh, send us an email with those ideas. We love the feedback um, to be able to provide some different ones next year, possibly, or some ones that you thought were very beneficial this year that we can repeat again next year. Um, but we will continue to be in the chat for anyone that has any additional questions. Um, but we're going to go ahead and stop this session. And again, we thank you so much for being with us this Monday, and we hope you have a great rest of the school year. We are here to support you um, through the rest of the year. So please um, ask any questions. You can have your school net lead put in a service now ticket. If you have any questions for Catherine or Amanda, we are happy to help. And we thank all of you. Thank you.